Well, my name is Richard Whalen, and I'm the unofficial historian for the town of Rotterdam. I just took it upon myself to do it. I used to be the town historian for the whole town of Rotterdam, but uh, I don't do that anymore. I went around taking a lot of pictures of myself on, uh, by myself of the old Erie Canal. Uh, some of the Beside the Erie Canal, I've taken pictures of the railroads. Uh, I used to work on a railroad for a while. I have lots of pictures of Hoffman's uh, and Pattersonville also. So I, not, I didn't stick to my own area. I uh, have uh, quite a bit of eight and a half by 11 pictures that I haven't put in uh, big books like this. Uh, in the basement that I'm working on now. And a lot of that uh, information or pictures were destroyed in the flood which inundated the whole basement as well as three or four foot of the first floor. Um, after the flooding happened I received an email from one of our trustees that said that Dick Whalen, the former Rotterdam town historian, that his home had been flooded and that his collection of historical materials had been lost, you know, completely destroyed. And I was thinking, you know, maybe there's something that we can do to salvage it. When the flood water receded, yeah, they went in and they went in and they took stuff out of refrigerators. I had old refrigerators that probably saved a lot of it. Um, so, no one had contact information for, for Dick. The phone number that we had obviously was his home phone. He'd been forced out of his, his home from the flooding. Um, their basement garage and four feet of the first floor of their residence were completely submerged in water. Their telephone was no longer in operation. Um, so we didn't really find a way to get a hold of him immediately. Um, but when we had some clearance from the Rotterdam Junction Fire Department, this ended up being about a week after the flooding, we actually went down there um, and we met his son-in-law on the property who was working on kind of clearing things out. We put the uh, materials into frozen storage as quickly as we could to prevent mold from damaging the materials and, and to prevent further deterioration of materials. Because um, if you have things like photographs, if they get wet, at first, you know, they can kind of be okay, but the longer they sit in water, the more the chance that you have that the emulsion will just totally lift off the photograph. And once the emulsion comes off, that's it. You know, that's, you can't recover any photograph after that. Um, so we, we put the materials in frozen storage. Then after that, I went through and systematically took out, you know, I'd have two of these thick, bind, you know, a binder would be maybe about this, this thick. Um, take out a, a couple binders of materials, let them thaw overnight, and then in, we had a, a work area that was completely self, you know, it wasn't connected via air um, to any other building, so that, that was really good as a work area because we don't want anything contaminating the rest of the building or possibly making people sick, so it was a self-contained area, and I would just basically go through and dry out, lay things to dry out for 72 hours. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was a very slow process that took several months to go through. So as you can see, what we did here is I, I noted what the, the topic was for this particular binder, which was Rotterdam Politics and Government. These are a lot of the photos that um, John Papp, who was Rotterdam town historian for a time, put together. Um, and you can see the kind of photos that are here. What's in here is mostly, I think, 50s through 80s. Um, and a lot of the photographs survived remarkably well. Um, with this one you can see places where the emulsion did start to come off of the photographs. Um, but most of them were actually in pretty good shape and there were very very few photos that the emulsion had lifted off so badly that we couldn't get an image. You know there were a few but luckily they were pretty few and far between. Well uh, it means a lot to me because I'm the one that took those pictures and I, I did, I do have a lot of them, but they didn't, I, I salvaged them somehow. And this is documentation of Rotterdam, you know, politics that we don't have in our library. So be able to be able to capture some of this and to be able to make it available to researchers is really, is really great.
because I don't know where else some of these materials would be would be found. 